Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic and today's bonus content. And today um, I'm very excited to be telling you that within the next week we're going to be launching our fourth app, Cracking the Cryptic's Thermo Sudoku, to go with our other three apps, Sandwich Sudoku, Classic Sudoku and Chess Sudoku. Uh, they're all available already from uh, you can look in the description link, in the in the detailed description link, um, or sorry, in the detailed description field. There are links to get all of them on the App Store or on Steam or on Android. Um, and we are going to be rolling out Thermo Sudoku across those platforms within the next week, as I say. So um, very pleased about that, and hopefully you'll enjoy the puzzles in it. So. We've taken one of the possible puzzles for the app out. It's not good. This one isn't going to be in the app. This is just for us to try today. Instead, big S in the grid formed from the three thermos. Maybe that stands for Simon or Superman, or maybe it's the same person. Hard to tell. Um, so I'm going to be having a go at that. I'm just going to very quickly remind you about our merch. So we've got this mug amongst the merchandise with the two logos on. Um, like that as well, and um, I'm sure I've got my phone case as well. There we go. So we've got all kinds of merchandise you can buy. Uh, again, that's linked below the video, as is this puzzle. You can click on the puzzle and try it before watching my solve. Um, hopefully you won't find it too difficult and it'll encourage you to, uh, to buy the app when it's out. So the rules of Thermo Sudoku are very simple. It's regular Sudoku rules plus the thermometers in the grid have to increase in number as you go along. So uh, the numbers have to get bigger. So this will be the smallest on the thermometer and this will be bigger and then they will carry on getting bigger all the way to the end. That is the simple rules of Thermo Sudoku. Now worth noting they can't be the same. So that can't be one and then one. You know, maybe your your imagination of a thermometer would allow those to be the same as long as they didn't go down, but not in Thermo Sudoku. They have to get bigger. So that said, let's get cracking. And we have very few givens in this grid and actually very few thermometers, just the three of them. However, that the corollary to that is that they're quite long. So this one in the middle is a full seven cells long. So it's only got a kind of two degree of freedom, which is nine minus seven. So we can start. I mean, there are different ways of approaching this. You can just kind of stare at the grid and make deductions. But I think I think it's easier with pencil marking. So I'm going to be doing that. And it's often easier to start along the thermometers. So the beginning could be one, two or three. The fact that there are two degrees of freedom, which is nine minus the length of the thermometer seven, means that I can add two digits to the one possible starter. Now, the next cell already, we were going to put two, three or four as the next digits up, but it can't be two. So we can restrict that already to three or four. This next one now, now we're down to two digits. It's either four or five. This one is five or six and suddenly, hang on, this one can't be six or seven. We've got seven in the box. So we now know this must be six. And that means we can go back down the snake, limiting these to five, four, three. I called it a snake. It's a thermometer. You know that. This one at the beginning can't limit that entirely. It's either one or two. But at the end of the snake, bigger than six, in the same row as a seven, not the end of the thermometer, it's got to be eight, and the end is nine. So we've got almost all that first snake placed straight away. So clearly these thermometery snakes, I'm getting confused in my terminology, are very useful. So let's have a look at this bottom one. So this, this snake Again, it's seven in length. So again, the same degrees of freedom, one, two or three, two, three or four, three, four or five. Now the central cell can't be a five, so it's four or six. That hasn't really limited us. Although that's a smaller, a fewer number of digits than there, it's still including the highest and the lowest possible that that would allow. So 
we carry on. Now this can't be six. This is seven or eight, and this is eight or nine. So we didn't get the kind of limitations from the rest of the grid that we got with the first snake. But let's try this top one. And it's essentially the same, it's seeing the same numbers in the columns and starting from the same column as this one, and it's symmetrical. So it'll be a fairly similar result, but there might be a difference towards the end. We're still doing the same things. Now, four six is interesting. That's forming a four six pair in the column. Let's bear that in mind. Five, six, seven, six, seven, eight, all virtually the same so far, but now at the end, it can't be eight. So it must be seven or nine. And let's have a look at that pair that we found, four or six in column five. So the other cells in the row are now limited to one, three, in the column, are now limited to one, three, eight or nine. The top one can't be an eight, that one can't be a nine. Now, what else can we learn? Well, look at these eights. Now, these are very useful suddenly. Two eights in columns nine and seven means that we can place an eight in row nine or in box nine, if you like, but it is in row nine. It's got to be there because that eight is ruling out those cells. This one's ruling out those and the thermometer is not possible for an eight. Now, once we get that eight, that's great. We can place seven here and then we can come back taking seven that is no longer possible because it's got to be lower. This next one has to be lower than six or five. Bam, we know that's a four. Um, this one is three. In fact, we can go all the way back to the head of the, th the bulb of the thermometer, head of the snake, I was gonna call it. And that's a one. Now this four, remember that four, six pair, that's sorted out this cell. And now this time we can go up the thermometer to the end, absolutely fixing those. So we've had serious progress. Now this three, that can't be in there anymore. Two and one, we can take those out of the equivalent cells. So we're really cutting down on what was possible and nearly filled the thermometers. Now we put a nine in there. So that's resolved this one, eight. This one can no longer be one or eight. <clears throat> this one can no longer be nine. Have we finished anything else off? Ah, yes, three. So this one could have been, it's basically a naked single. It's seeing two, four, five, six, and seven in the column, one and eight in the row, and three in the box. So now we can fill that in as a nine. Without some pencil marks, that would have been pretty hard to spot, to be fair. Um, so that nine and that nine and that nine are ruling out all of these cells. So we can put a nine in here. We get a nine in one of those two. Ah, now this one is one, five or six from the row. One and six are already in the box. So that fixes the last digit on that snake and we can finish off the whole of the bottom row. That one acts on the central snake uh, thermometer. I can't get, I can't get a snake out of my head. Oh well. Um, so we can finish off that one. Now up here, we still haven't quite finished off the top thermometer, but not to worry. But we can place seven in this box because it's ruled out of those cells by a couple of sevens in the grid already now. So we can put a seven in there. Six must be in one of those two and three must be in one of those two. Now that is useful. This three is ruled out of those two. So it's got to go there. And that means this can't be a three. So that becomes a four. We can place the five. Just got one thermometer cell left to finish, but that four is now ruled out of those two. That's great. So that box nine is largely finished. Um, now, what else can we do here? Ah, yes, nine and two can't be in those two in the top row, so they must go over here. Now we can place one and three. We had that useful one to disambiguate them. And we've got a four, six pair here now. Three, seven. Now the one, nine in column three, they can't be in the bottom box, so we can put them in here. This is two, five. 
we can place the three and four to finish this box apart from the last two and that resolves this seven three pair and the whole thing's coming together in a very kind of holistic way finally the last that two has fixed the last um, thermometer cell and four, two, nine, three, eight. where are we going to put five in this box not in this row because of the five already in it so five there now we've got a one seven six triple which we can't completely resolve uh, but that does mean this can't be six anymore so it's coming together very neatly now and We've got a 389 triple as well, so that's not been completed yet. Um, what else can we find to put in this car? Okay, let's take out the 716 from down here. They're not possible. So we're going to need... Ah, look, this is effectively naked. 392481 in the column, 76 in the row. We can put that 5 in. I think the last almost the last five in the grid goes there we've got a couple still to place down here two three five nine one eight so that becomes a four because it's got seven and six in its row uh that four lets us put the four in box four we can finish off column one thanks to that two seven and six still to place there I haven't resolved those yet so not quite sure. Six, four, five, eight. Okay, where does two go in column nine? Bear in mind we've got twos already in rows four and six. Um, this one is six or seven. Actually, that gives us an interesting six, seven pair in row five. Does that enable us to get something else? No, not for sure. Actually, that makes this one or nine because it can't be eight or three. That gives us a one or nine pair. And now we've got three and eight for these two cells and a three to decide which way round they go. It's quite an interesting uh, little finish there. Now, three must be here in this box. Still don't know whether this is one or seven though. Um, and this could be any of one, six or nine, I think. So we've got a one, nine pair still to place in box five. This can't be, ah, this can't be one or three anymore. So we know that's eight. Now that gives us that one. Um, seven in box eight has to be here because we've got a seven here and a seven here. Now that two lets us do that two. We can finish off all of the bottom three boxes. That one has enabled us to resolve all the one nine pairs around, which is very helpful because there's quite a few of them. Another one there. That finishes off the triple up here. And now we can finish off the last two boxes. And that is a Thermo Sudoku. As I say, that one is not in the app, but I think it's it's reasonably indicative. That's about in the middle of the um, difficulties of the puzzles in the app. I have tested them all. I can assure you I know um, very well firsthand what level of difficulty they are. Now, please bear in mind that the app has hints as well that we have prepared to help you get through these puzzles if you do get stuck or if you can't find the next move. You can click on them and they're very useful. The app also has some great technology where as you place pencil marks, unlike our website technology, when you place pencil marks, it will erase pencil marks that um, can be clearly seen in that row or column or box can no longer be correct. So it's very useful at kind of helping you solve as you go along. Um, but you do have to strictly take a logical approach and as usual with all our apps that's the whole point is to help you learn better to hone your logical skills and solve Sudoku. So I do encourage you to buy it. Uh, it's I think five dollars in the US or five pounds in the UK, probably five euros in uh, European territories as well. So those are the sort of prices we're talking about. It's not all that much. You'll get 40 puzzles initially and then 11 more monthly releases, I think, of five puzzles each. That's how it works. But uh, I recommend it.
I hope you enjoyed this puzzle today. I hope you enjoy all of our content on Cracking the Cryptic and I very much hope to see you soon again. Do stay safe. And uh, for now, thanks very much for watching and bye.